Alright, this is SSL Family Dad with Simple Suburban Living and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and working on some computer repair, some basic computer repair. Um, and this is just something that I think everyone should have a, a basic understanding of how to do. You know, with the, the internet and YouTube and all these resources are, are out there, um, there's really no, no reason why anyone can't do some basic uh, repairs at home themselves. At least troubleshoot what the problems are so they have an idea of what they're going to expect. Um, if you have to take it in for major repair. So what we're working on today is a, a desktop computer that this is actually a custom a custom computer that I built um, but uh, I had a CPU fan or a processor fan that went bad. Um, I've already taken it out the fan sits right here and no matter what kind of desktop computer you have they're gonna look very similar where you're gonna have a, a spot where the CPU fan is right in the center of the system usually. Um, and uh, basically the the symptoms of a, a CPU fan going bad or have gone bad you'll generally get a, a message uh, when you turn the computer on that will pop up and say you know CPU fan is speed is low or CPU fan not functioning or something like that um, you may also get blue screens uh, computer shutting down uh, or crashing you might get very slow performance um, that can happen when your CPU fan gets very dusty also and it's not getting the heat away from there um, when the when the processor runs hot your computer runs slow basically so the cooler you can keep it the better off you are um, so in my case I had a, a CPU fan this this computer is pretty old and uh, I got that message that said it was not functioning I looked I opened the cover up and looked in here and it's just it's not spinning at all um, I could spin it with my finger and it would kind of go a couple times and stop again and so I knew it was time to replace it so I've taken that out and basically what I'm working with here is an AMD processor um, Intel processors have little different brackets around the outside and if you do need to replace a fan you'll need to make sure that you have a fan that's compatible with your particular type of computer and uh, I'll put some resources in the description on how you can determine what type of a fan you need. Uh, these are called sockets and uh, the processor fits into a socket here and this these are they're all a little bit different so AMD and Intel and different versions and models have different sockets. But generally, what you'll get is a replacement fan. This is kind of a fancy one. Um, it sits up like this on top of the processor. Most of your CPU fans you're going to get are going to look more like that. They'll sit on top of it this way. Um, but uh, this was a kind of a universal fan, and this will work for just about all the AMD and Intel sockets. And this is a good way to go because it covers pretty much all, all your bases. Um, and it basically just comes with various different hardware that you'll use to connect it, just depending on what type of uh, socket you have. So uh, I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer here, and we'll start with uh, taking the old processor out and getting it cleaned up a little bit and getting it ready to put the new fan on. Okay, so we're in close here on the processor itself, and you'll notice kind of some silver gunk on the top of this, this uh, processor. So this is something that we need to get cleaned off um, to make sure that this is a nice smooth surface for us to attach our new fan to. We, want, we don't want any gunk in there. It'll, it'll interrupt the heat dissipation. So uh, the first thing we need to do is get this cleaned off. Now, you can clean it off right in here with, with some Q-tips. That's fine, but it's a little bit risky because you might end up kind of pushing some of the silver stuff off into the circuits around it, dripping alcohol on things, which could cause trouble. So I, I prefer to take the, the processor right out. Um, so um, using, you know, you always want to have your hand somewhere on the frame of the computer on some metal, one of your hands, so that you're always at the same, you know, there's no static dissipation between your hand and the system, no static shock from the carpet or anything like that. So always make sure you touch the frame of the computer somewhere and with your other hand while you're working here. Now there's a lever on the side of the processor along the side here, and all you're going to do is just kind of push that down and pull it out, and then you pull that up. And that lever will pop up straight, and then you go ahead and lift your processor right out. You'll see all the pins on the bottom there. And then that uh, silver surface on the top. So we're going to set this aside here and just get it all cleaned up. Okay, so all we're going to do here is just use some 90% um, or above uh, isopropyl alcohol. And you don't want to use the 50% stuff that has too much water in it. So use the highest concentration alcohol you can get. 99% is the best. And just use a Q-tip. And we're just going to get this all cleaned up here. So just have it sit on a power, uh, paper towel and... I'm just going to keep kind of working all this silver, it's called thermal compound or thermal paste. Um, I'm going to clean all that off here. We've got our processor all cleaned off here. 
and ready to pop, pop it back in and get ready to put the new fan on. So when you're putting the processor back in, there's a uh, small little arrow, gold arrow on the corner of the processor, and there's always an arrow on the corner of the socket also. And so you just want to line those two up. Sorry, my hand's in the way here, and just kind of let the pins fall into place. And of course, when you're handling the processor, make sure that you're always static discharged as well. Uh, make sure you're always holding on to the frame of the computer and don't touch all those pins. Um, and, you know, it's very, very important that you clean all that uh, that thermal compound off the, the processor. And a lot of people will just say, oh, I'll just put the new fan on and don't worry about that. But it will not work. It will, uh, it will overheat. So make sure you clean up real good until those Q-tips come off uh, perfectly clean. Pop your processor back in and cl clamp your lever back down and we're ready to put the new fan on. Okay, so we've got our new fan here, um, and again, I'm dealing with a little bit older uh, fan and an older CPU socket here, but uh, for any of the AMD um, sockets out there, basically has this uh, little bar that uh, slips underneath the fan, and there's some notches in the uh, fan that it slides into, and this is going to clamp onto a little hook on one side of the bracket, and then the other side has this little cam that slides on here and then when you lift up on this cam it tightens it down and so I'll show you kind of how this goes in to the actual system but uh, this this is how the AMD sockets look or, or fan brackets look um, the other ones again there's instructions that come with the fan that will tell you show you pictures of how to attach your particular type um, and you can look up all kinds of different uh, um, pictures and other walkthroughs online for every specific socket. So this one is particularly in a socket 939 um, AMD socket, which is which is much older. So this is an older system here. So another thing that we'll talk about real quick. Um, it's funny that they have to put labels like this. Please peel off. Yes, do not leave the plastic on your fan. Um, there's a lot of different uh, ways to put the thermal compound onto the. Uh, fan or the CPU and there's a lot of different controversy around about that but um, I found it best to actually put the thermal compound on the actual fan bracket itself so this is the part that's going to come in contact with our processor you can also put it uh, directly on the processor really whatever you feel like you want to do but all you need to do is just spray or squirt about a pea size bit of that thermal compound right in the center of either the fan uh, spot here or on the top of your CPU. You don't need to spread it out with a credit card or with a card. You don't need to, to try to do all that kind of good stuff. If you do it this way, as soon as you press it onto the CPU, it's going to flatten it out evenly and it's going to give you a really nice um, seal between the two. The job of the thermal compound is to make sure that there's no air gaps between the metal and the processor. So it gives you a complete heat transfer between the CPU and the fan and gets that heat dissipated. If you don't do this step right or you put too much in there or too little or you don't use any at all or anything like that, it's, it's just not going to work properly and your, your CPU is going to run hot. So this is important to do. So about a pea size drop right in the center of the, uh, the fan bracket here and then this is going to sit right on top of that, uh, that CPU. Okay, so we're going to get our, our fan inserted here on top of the CPU. And again, we got that pea size drop of the thermal compound on top. I'm going to set this down squarely on top of the processor. Make sure it's seated nicely on there. And we're going to get our brackets hooked up here. Okay, once the CPU fan's all locked into place there, nice and tight on top of the processor, all we gotta do is hook up the, the little wire here. And they're always labeled right on the motherboard. This says CPU fan, and they'll only fit in one way. So generally you can kind of tell from the connector which side the pin is closest to. And you wanna carefully insert that onto the clip, and that's it. Now we'll go ahead and fire it up and make sure the fan works.
All right, so we're back in business here. Everything's working the way it should. Um, the processor fan's running uh, at full speed, and we've got all of our temperatures back down to where they need to be. So now this is just a real old computer, and uh, for 15 bucks, I was able to get this working again for us. Uh, all this does basically is we act, it acts as kind of a backup server or a backup computer for us. We don't really use it on a red daily day-to-day -day basis. So um, to be able to just kind of keep this thing running as long as possible is important to us. Um, this is one of those things that I really, you know, I think that with all the resources out there, YouTube and the internet and all the different things that you can look up on how to, uh, that anybody should be able to do. Changing out hard drives, um, running some basic diagnostics on a computer, doing kind of simple cleanup on the system, um, replacing easy you know, hardware components, things like that. Um, this is really something that you shouldn't shy away from. Uh, look at the resources that you have available and, and dig in and, and do it. Um, I'm always available for questions. If, if anyone has questions, please throw those in the comments below and I'll help to the best of my knowledge. I will put some resources in the description as well to uh, how you can figure out what type of fan you might need or what type of socket you have and all that kind of good stuff. Um, and of course, you can always ask me and I'll look it up for you. Um, so please subscribe to the channel. Um, we do a lot of various things on this, on this uh, YouTube channel and this is just one of those things that I like to do um, to help kind of promote self-reliance and self-sustainability and, and DIY and doing things yourself. So um, please hit thumbs up if you enjoyed the video or found it useful at all and thanks for watching. Have a good one.